So, should we start now? Yes, yeah, thank you. All right. Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh to everyone and good morning to everyone present. My name is Shahira and I'll be your host for today's uh, official online interview session. This interview session is required to be conducted because of our assignment in one of our core courses that we are taking this semester, which is Introduction to Public Relations, BKK 20703. So what we're doing today is uh, that we're going to ask 10 questions to our PR professional and hope to gain knowledge and a little bit of understanding about public relations so that we could prepare ourselves for the work field once we graduated. So before we proceed, I would like to express my gratitude to Mr. Arash Muhammad uh, for taking your time out of your busy schedule in order to grace us with your presence today uh, and help us up with our humble request. Uh, I hope that our exchanges today will be remembered as memorable for more days to come. So I, as the representative of all group members uh, uh, and as UDISA students, uh, would like to thank you in advance before we begin. So without further ado, let us proceed with our session. Uh, I hope Mr. Aras is ready. Ready. Thank you. Alright, so uh, let's start with the first question. Uh, could you introduce yourself, your background, your expertise and your education and what inspired you to pursue your career as in VR? Uh, okay, so just a little bit my background. Uh, my background is minimum 100% 100% from public relations and digital marketing uh, background. And I study is a, I pursue my bachelor degree in public relations uh, at UITM Shah Alam. Um, and apart from that, uh, in terms of what I, my expertise that I'm doing now is um, much of my what my job scope is covered from the aspects of public relations, um, digital marketing, marketing, um, and as well as a uh, media bias. So these are the three main cores of uh, my job scope and my day-to-day -day task. So, um, sorry, what was it? I did like it. Uh, and then just so basically a bit of what I'm doing now. Currently, I'm, I'm working for several companies. Um, which are attached as a full-time, but uh, very flexible. Uh, one of them, I work for a, a United Kingdom uh, cybersecurity company. It's called ProCheckUp, where as a marketing executive and, and as well as a, the uh, project management as well. And apart from that, uh, at the moment, I attach to Asia Football Confederations, SPR and Social Media um, Assistant Manager. Uh, for uh, Asia Football Confederation. So these are basically two jobs that I'm currently juggling around. Okay, thank you for the first question, Mr. Aras. So let's proceed. Okay, so the second question is, do you think having or not having a degree in VR or corporate communication makes any difference in your work experience? Um, I think more or less, I would say it's better for you to have at least a bachelor degree or if not a bachelor degree, at least you take outside course or you take through uh, any mean of uh, knowledge young they have to offer either online. But yes, for me, it's I very agree. It, it's important basically for you to have a bachelor degree. Uh, that's the least minimum in basically in public relations. Due to public relations work is a very demanding and there's too many competitors, especially when you are a fresh grad, when you are someone just finished your or completed your uh, studies, you know, you are competing with so many people. You know, PR is very competitive field. We are evolving very fast. It's the same as marketing. You are evolving almost every year. And these are the main thing. I think it's, but what makes more for me, having a bachelor degree, is the standard bar so it's a requirement for you to have that but you need to have something more that can just you know upsell you more especially when you find jobs and as well as when you want to uh, pursue a much more better career enhancements mm, understood all right so on to the third question uh we noticed you used to work as a pr associate at world communications in Denver, right? yeah so during covid in the midst of shock what were your primary responsibilities or main role as a newly employed PR associate at the time? Okay, so talking a bit back, one of my working experience for World Communication that was during uh, pandemic 2020-2021, um, 
it was a new experience for sure for everyone else, including me myself. Um, but what much of my job at the time is cover hundred percent from PR aspect. We we still it just much of the work is remain the same as it was before the pandemic. It's just much of it just transi- transition from being much more physical interact action to online and virtual. Much to say, if, you know, from physical meeting, we convert into online meeting, uh, physical events, conference, we just everything will be converted into online events, conference, webinar, and so on. But in terms of what my role and my responsibility, uh, it's much covers from, you know, de- developing press release, uh, connecting with media, as well as project management for events, planning, proposal, you know, all this works behind the scene in terms of making any programs, any events, any conference, uh, you know, successful, especially as well, including for the media side. You know, whenever you have uh, events, whenever you have conference, and so on, you, you need to have media. So that's one of my rules for connecting the media, developing, uh, you know, what we can offer for them. So this is some of my words. Understood. Okay, on to the fourth question. Were you involved in any PR professional body during your tenure? Was it local or international? Um, so, in terms of body, um, I when I was working for World Communication, um, I did attach a moment with a uh, local uh, PR association. Uh, sorry, I forgot what's name. It's called the Public Relations... Sorry, public relations, uh, association, leisure, something like that. Sorry, I forgot. But that was during uh, much of it during world communications because much of the time we work closely with them and it, and it, it supported that. Uh, and plus my management level, uh, I would say the committee level and the management level inside the association as well. So for it's quite a requirement us as a staff. Uh, we need to be a part of the... Uh, you know, part of that body of institution as well. So a little bit of what we do is we're connecting all these, you know, PR-minded people. Uh, we are collaborating in terms of, you know, uh, gathering up as together in terms of, you know, uh, collaborate and develop, for example, conference or event. We, we, it's a basically a win-win situation where we connect with all our competitors, with all our uh, field experts, you know, but with the same goal, you know, to grow together through this association, basically. All right, understood. So the next question is quite personal. So between what is popular and what uh, and doing what is right in your PR role, how did you make a decision that aligned with your ethics and values? So for me to identify what right is or wrong is, of course, you need to. It started with how you are. Personally, being, uh, I think how you being guide and you are being groomed, and at the same is understand whether which one is right or wrong. I think this is very common sense, you know. For example, sometimes you encounter situations where it's very not to your liking, but actually it's right. It sometimes you have to put, uh, yourself or in certain time you need to put the organization that you work with. Uh, first before yourself and sometimes much of the time you have to put yourself first before your organization it depends on what kind of the situation is and how badly it could kind of you know impact you but much of the times we as a PR we are bound to be truthful and as well as especially in PR we uh, you know not try to manipulate I mean it's it's how do I say this uh, it's basic PR work is manipulation that's what we we, mani- we, we manipulate, but there's a limitation on what we manipulate, on what we are, uh, you know, we don't go over the board. We manipulate as long as it is doesn't, you know, completely change the story or it doesn't affect the other people's side. We just manipulate. For example, especially when it comes to uh, crisis management, when your organization or your company, uh, you know, being accused of this certain allegation or this accusation or something virus, for example, that happened. It's your job as a PR, how you want to overcome this, how you want to turn this over. If you know that this is actually doesn't happen to your company, so how you want to turn it over? For example, you, you have a press conference where you need to have a very proper script for your uh, 
uh, spokesperson of the company, representative of the company, or even CEO of your company, you know, for this press conference to clarify that everything is like this and so on. Yeah. Okay, sure. All right, on to the next question. Uh, how have your day-to-day -day responsibilities evolved or differed between your role as a PR associate and as a corporate communication executive? Is there any different? Yeah, um, so corporate communication and PR, there might be some, say, quite same, but they are not basically. Uh, basically, what corporate communication, we much more of just managing the corporate side. What, it, what I mean is that... Uh, Corporate communication can be in terms of you managing the company social media, you managing the company's website, you managing the company, you know, or in terms of through the company uh, media channels, website, uh, newsletters, for example, those things are part of your job. But when it comes to for me, uh, in terms of for PR side, it's much more you engaging with the media, that's one thing. But of course, you are engaging with public, but in a different way through media releases, through developing specific campaigns, you know, for example, we, we develop a campaign, uh, you know, first, let's say you work for uh, Lotus, a very high, a very big brand of it is, you know, you have to be very, uh, you know, very creative in terms of how you want to develop this PR campaign. Why? Because the objective, for, let's say, the objective is, you know, we, you have this new product that comes from Lotus, so how you want to market it out there? So you cannot just, if, for example, just a, this is how normal people do, so, and this is very wrong. You know, you have this new product and you just, you directly want to sell it. For me, it's right, but it doesn't, it doesn't take you far and it takes you very long time in terms of how you want to do. So you have to be creative, you know, in terms of maybe collaborative with someone or especially nowadays, content is, you know, especially like video content and so on, video campaign. Those things are play a very much impactful, and sometimes you know in PR as well. You know you can do if you have the resources, you can you know do something that quite different. You know I think if you know like uh, uh, what do you call it like for example like Park Mart Western, if you saw their social media right, that that's quite strong in terms of how they market, but at the same time it was not it it's kind of fifty fifty not not so good because it kind of stray away of a way of what the PR is. I understand they, they want to focus on, you know, they, they want to diversify, even not focus on their product, focus on the celebrity of stuff, but it's it's not completely how basically how you should manage, uh, especially in PR campaign, you need to have a very specific goals in terms of how you to uh, achieve that. Okay. Uh, so what is so you mentioned something about doing something that is different, right? So this uh, proceed to the second question. So yeah. what are the specific strategies you implemented to foster positive relationships uh, with the media? And how well did your strategy work? Okay, so for me, my strategy or, or my, my mindset whenever it comes to media, you have to treat the media as like your best friend. If they are not your best friend, or you there just like your former people you meet i don't think they want to they want to cover you at all just a very straightforward talking line and how basically this uh, media works media industry works so you as a pr whenever you're engaging with this uh, media you have to be you know you have to build that relationship sometimes to the level of personal some because much of the time um, when it comes to even work decision making or how you can get close to someone it doesn't happen on the work situation it happens usually off the wind situation. You let pa mama, you let pa cafe, you know, you go drink, let pa mino, makan apa semua those things. You talk about person like with all this media person, you become very close to them. Like. It makes them to that level. For example, I can, um, you know, I have a few media contacts. I'm very close. I can just call them, hey, I need this, uh, you know, uh, this quite news. Huh? We have a new thought story. So can you help to cover? I don't need to pay to them because we are very close and so on. But let's say if you don't know them, they may they might charge you. Uh, when it comes to media, sometimes they will charge you three, four, five thousand. Nowadays it's going up; the price is going much up. Just for one, let's say, uh, articles on their website, five thousand ringgit. You know, for me, I can get that for free. You know, if you know how to work around it. So for me, it's about how you build that 
relationship with them in a very personal level. Let's say you, when you meet them, you buy some gift, you know, you ambi hati lah, basically. How you win their over, be close. You know? So basically, this is what uh, PRs do lah. Yeah. You, 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 it's not just on on the work phase, but it's also on beyond the work punya area. Uh, sometimes you have to go beyond. But that's what PR is. It's about you have to be able to adapt yourself in those kind of variable situations. But still, you're not straight away from your goals. You, you have a goal to achieve. All right, understood. All right, so on to the next question. Could you share a specific campaign you were involved in at either World Communications in Denver Heart or at Halal Development Corporation Berhad? What are the objectives and your role in it? Sure. So one of our examples I can give uh, for World Communication, we have campaign. Uh, this one was for one of our client. Our client was Giant, a very one of big retails uh, wholesale as well. Uh, giant they have it was in 2021 they have they want they want to develop a new campaign where they want to reduce the price since it was during pandemic as well the cost of living is quite high and people are you know quite suffering in terms of financial so they they want to introduce a campaign at very low price so what we did we we um, and me and my team basically uh, we developed a proposal and we came up with a campaign name it's called uh, Harga Lagi Lagi sorry Harga lagi rendah. What was it called? I'm sorry. Harga lagi rendah. Harga lagi lagi rendah, lagi lama. Something like that. I'm sorry. This was. But still, I found a mistake. Still, but you can uh, check. So what we did, because basically, they have all, all these certain items that they want to uh, reduce the price. Basically, a very basic necessity. Like uh, rice, uh, chicken, fish. You know, those things are, you know, a very... Uh, fast growing of in terms of sales for this item. So what we did as well, we do a launch campaign for that at one of these uh, uh, giant uh, branch. I think it was at Kota Damansara. So we have a launch. We invite celebrities. You know, we prep all the media list. We contact all the media and everything. We prep all these uh, ceremony. Uh, you know, ceremony. Sorry, uh, the ceremony. Uh, in a tentative and so on you know it was a very it's a it's a half day of you know showing like this is a grand and a new innovation from even though it's basically like something that probably already happened a few years ago right i think it's almost every year some people will do the price but for us how can we make it different it, it just in a way of how we portray this to the people from the media sites or the event day we try to make it like it's something is very grand or something new even though it's something that already happened before. So yeah, I guess that's my... And when it comes to um, Hello Development Corporation, we have a campaign as well. We It's called uh, Jadikan Hala Pilihan Utama. So what basically is we encourage uh, people to uh, buy halal products. So we have like, a, you can call like a member of association, a company that under us, that they have this very local product halal that they want to you know enter the market or they're just in the market so it's our job in terms of we develop a separate uh, a specific campaign how we want to market their products very creatively and help them to grow so we have this jadika halal pilihan utama to encourage people to buy this halal products you know to show that hey our local product is the same level as the product that we import from overseas and so on so it doesn't make much of a difference. And plus, what better is our halal is certified. And you know, it show that, hey, Malaysia halal is the strongest one in the world. You know, we, we highlight all these key features. Uh, you know, it show that, you know, better high local product is the same quality as you buy in the overseas one or the common one that we buy every day sometimes. Yeah. For example, like Milo. Milo is from Nestle. It's from basically from overseas. So they have, so we have like, a local brand, let's say this called Coco Coco uh, for Coco Coco Co- Co- drinks or something like that. You know, we we try to much upscale on that stuff. Uh, I try to change it in terms of getting a new traction of the audience. Uh. Okay, understood. So next question: How do you believe your role as a PR associate contributed to building and maintaining the company's brand image? So you as a PR. Um, how do you uh, 
managing the your role and everything is is for me is how you uh, act and how your attitude, how your personality, how you portray yourself to the to the other people, to everyone you meet every day, especially in your work. If you are being like you know, um, you don't have that very good attitude and so on, it kind of have a bad reflection on what people say, not just to you but your organization as well. So for me, when I was working with Volcom, uh, my boss always grew me that, you know, you have to be a very cool person 24-7 because we we work beyond the working hour. We don't work 9 to 5. We don't work just like Monday to Friday. We work even time on Sunday, even though when I'm outside. So we have to, you know, be a cool person whenever clients, whenever people are coming to us. We have to be cool. Like, yes, how can we assist you? Anything else? Or, uh, you know, you, you have to be that very, very a uh, good, you know, you have to very good customer service. That's one thing of Christerity as a PR. You need to have a good customer service when you meet everyone. And first impression, long last, actually. It, they do have very long, long impact, you know. And first impression is usually the hardest thing to change, especially if you messed up in the first place. So it's about, for me, it's about your attitude, your personality. As for example, is you know, you come, you have a meeting with the client and you come late. What do you think the client think to you, right? I think you are not very, or not punctual at all. Those things as well, they, if, for me, if I put myself in the client, I would think that, you know, oh, this guy is late. I guess this is how this company works. You get what I mean? You know, oh, they are not that punctual. The people that have this kind of assumption and this kind of thinking, you know, perception towards uh, others' organization as well. So those things... In working in PR, you have to be very careful. So many things that you you have to, but all these things you only learn once you work and you observe. You know, you, you always have to be mindful, uh, especially in PR. You have always to be mindful. Okay, so you mentioned crisis uh, management before. So, have you ever been involved in crisis communication management? And what are the strategies you employ? And what lessons do you learn from? Yes, um, so I've been in the crisis management many times, actually. Uh, but usually the strategy is we identify what is the real problem. We identify how much of the uh, negative exposure has already been out there uh, and how we want to overcome it in a very, in a very, I would say, try to find the middle ground. We try not to be too much of, you know, uh, if it is our fault, you know, yes, we admit it, but we bring up something else as well. In terms of, let's say we have, you know, yeah, we have, we make mistakes, you know, and we, we and it's something we cannot avoid anymore. So we have to admit that it is our fault. But what I did was something different. We don't just say to people that we are sorry and so on. But hey, we have something new as well in terms of, uh, it's like we are covering up for the mistake. Okay, we're offering you this. We have this for you guys. We have this, you know, we're offering something to people to divert, not just from the own mistake. Hey, we are making back to you. We are doing something. Better. We are making it up to you again. So those are usually the biggest, the, the biggest strategy that I'm doing now in terms of uh, how many I could implement, you know. I guess that's about it. Understood. Thank you so much. Uh, so we're now on our last track, on our last question. So, uh, do you have any advice for us who are currently taking public relations in our current semester? Sure. I guess my advice to you is uh, be very mindful, and and then uh, very you have to very you have to be a very cool duck. What I mean by cool duck is if you can see a duck, right? They have this very you see their very posture, right? They like the gar and stuff. So you have as a PR, whenever you meet people, you have to be that cool person. You have to be someone that your client or or any people sees you that they then they need they want to work with you they can see you are very reliable but of course you know have a good attitude that just one part of it doing a good job that's another that's a very huge one for the client but as I say it, it's always for you it's good for you to always learn and never stop learning as a PR you always have to learn and the world is adapting to new things and whatnot. And old media is slowly, slowly lose traction and the new media is coming up. But what I mean by new media is social media, of course. You know, it's the new way of 
uh, how you want to perceive the message out there, and it's it, it's not going to stop any any time soon. So this oh, platform, social media, is basically it's a new way. Not just some people say that marketing is just only uh, sorry, social media is just for marketing, but it's not. PI is also how you portray yourself in terms of in the social media as well. So this is very important. Uh. I guess my my very wise is always you know try to maintain your attitude whenever you meet people, as well, especially when you start your working and so on. Uh, try to be and then of and one more other thing as a PI as well you. You don't. You cannot just be a silent, or you just sit back and so on. So because from my experience, right, lots of my classmates, they are very um, quiet. We we have, uh, we have given opportunity once, and the reason why I got basically when I got a job for Worldcom, I don't have to interview. My boss take me because he saw what I can do on the uh, event. So basically, the event, right? We we we. We as a volunteer students, we being a volunteer there for that specific event, which is under work on at that time. Um, what I did, and I can see a lot of my classmates, they just sitting there in their groups, not try to mingle around with all this, you know, because that event is involving with very, very expert people in PR industry, very, very, you know, high profile pe- people. Why not you just go there and say hello, introduce yourself, you know, or seeking advice or just asking them how are they and so on you know those things can make a difference so those are the things that i did i can see a lot of my group, my classmates they're just sitting in one group on the other side and not try to take the opportunity so for me it's always for you to to try something new. you know if you want to achieve more you got to do more if you want to do something that is different different than others you have to go through this conflict you have to go through something that you are not very comfortable with because honestly, I tell you, I'm a very introvert person before. I, I'm even now. I'm still introvert, you know. But when it comes to work, I cannot be introvert. I have to go. Sometimes it's even now. I can tell you, it's still sometimes very discomforting. Too much of people coming in. You are an introvert, right? So you understand. You know, if you are an introvert, you understand. You know, too much people is just too. Sometimes it can be too too, too stressed that you need to have that time. But you have to believe that you know this discomfort situation is what makes you grow. You don't grow in comfort. You grow in those hard situations. You grow in pressure. You know, yeah, those are the things. Yeah, you know, just just don't stop learning. Keep learning. Try new things. Um, always try to find new innovations. You know, on how we want to adapt, especially in media. And all those are something that is very good on the way. You know, me. I mean, Malaysia. We have quite a good media, but not that great in terms of how others, uh, especially. Uh, some of other countries but it, I would say ours is good but we can be better so I guess it's up to us and you guys as well on how we can improve you know in terms of for the PI industry I guess that's about it mm, that's a very eye-opening advice thank you so much to Mr. Raj so we can learn more to <coughs> in this session so uh, thank you so much for giving us a bit of your time no problem uh, it's a good session uh, and that's it uh, for today I hope that we don't take too much of your time <laughs> so uh, also sir uh, if you could turn on your camera maybe we can have a picture together sure okay okay you in three yeah yeah Three, two, one. Okay, thank you very much, sir. All right.